I was able to improve my actual MCAT score by 10 points from my last practice test exam one week beforehand by changing the way that I was using practice testing. Hi there, my name is Sarah. And today we're gonna discuss how you can use practice exams as more than just an assessment of your knowledge. One thing that practice tests are really great for is building the stamina that it takes to take the MCAT. For most people, and I was this way, you probably don't have a lot of experience sitting down and testing for seven and a half hours. Not only are you sitting there for that amount of time, but you're actually having to think. And that's hard work over that amount of time. So how do you prepare yourself for a marathon of a test, especially if you've never done it before? Well, full-length practice tests are a great tool. Remember the saying, Rome wasn't built in a day. So it's okay if the first time you sit down and take a full-length practice exam doesn't go exactly how you'd like to. For me, the first time I sat down and did a full-length practice test, I couldn't even finish it in one sitting. But by the time I took the actual MCAT, that amount of time sitting down and testing felt like it flew by. So how do you get there? Well, it's okay to do small incremental sittings of practicing, just sitting in one place, thinking, and then incrementing that and increasing that over time. So starting practice testing early is key. Another key thing that practice tests can be great for that a lot of people don't initially realize is building your content knowledge. I was really similar to a lot of students and you might feel this way as well, where I thought I couldn't start taking practice tests until I was an expert on all of the content. But what I didn't know at the time was how much practice testing would help me actually build my content knowledge in and of itself. Practice testing can help build familiarity with not only what content appears on the test and how frequently, but also the way that content is presented and tested. One tip for your first practice exam or your first couple, especially if you don't feel as confident with content yet, is just keep a piece of scrap paper beside you while you're testing. And as you go and you encounter different topics and content areas that you don't feel as confident with, or you know you need to review, just jot it down really quickly. That way, when you're done with your practice test, you pretty much already have generated a study guide for yourself that will give you direction on where to go now and review that content. Practice testing and practice questions are a form of active recall. And what active recall does is it teaches you how to go back in your brain and retrieve the information that you need, whether that's content information or maybe information on how to do a math equation, that you're gonna need to answer a question and solve the problem in front of you. So even if you miss a question or several questions and you might feel frustrated on your practice test, the process of testing yourself and making yourself go back and try to find that information and bring it forward is actually helping you reinforce that content and it'll improve your memory in the future as well. The third area that practice testing can be really valuable for is building pattern recognition. So how do you build pattern recognition? Well. One of the most important things that you can do when you're taking practice tests actually happens after the test is done. And that's reviewing your answers. Now, many of us probably are familiar with going back and reviewing questions that you got wrong. A lot of us have probably done that before. You probably have experience doing that. But what a lot of students overlook, and I was similar to this, is actually reviewing what you got right. Because the questions you're getting right as well are showing you what you're doing that leads you to success. And ultimately, those behaviors that lead you to success, that lead you to answering questions correctly, are behaviors that you're gonna wanna reproduce. So when you're reviewing your practice test or practice questions, really ask yourself what led you to getting a question right or what led you to getting a question wrong. You wanna look at maybe there was some content that you were missing that you know you wanna go review later. Maybe you knew the content and you got the question right. Well, what was that process like that led you from what I know to answering this question? Maybe you knew the content and you got the question wrong. Why is that? What was your reasoning? Maybe you didn't know the content, but you were able to think through the question and the answer choices and come to the correct answer. All of these are different pathways. And what you want to do is go back and review what pathways and what reasoning was happening in your brain and what leads you to success and which ones tripped you up and leads you to getting questions incorrect. And remember, those questions that you're getting incorrect, that's not a personality flaw or anything like that. Those are valuable chunks of information for you. So it's okay to miss those questions. Now, you might be like me and many other students where maybe you're experienced testing before 
and maybe in college or other experiences, you're used to sitting down and taking a test and as you go through the test, you're relatively certain as you go through, at least if you know the information or you don't. I used to walk out of exams, chemistry exams in college and think, yeah, maybe I missed question five, part B, probably didn't get all five points, maybe just got three. But the MCAT's really different and you might not have that level of certainty and familiarity when you're taking the MCAT and you're going through the MCAT on a question by question basis. That lack of certainty is okay. And it's not an indicator that you're not gonna do well on the test or anything about your performance. It's actually just how the test is set up because the test is testing you on your ability to reason and problem solve in the face of that uncertainty. Think of it like going for a hike. You probably have some familiarity and some sort of plan before you go. You probably looked at the trail or maybe you know how long or the elevation gain of the hike that you're about to do. But as you go, you have other things that you're falling back on as well because no one's expecting you to have a perfect memory throughout the hike of exactly what mile you're on or exactly what foot of elevation gain you're on. Maybe there's markers on the trail. Maybe you have a map with you. And you also probably have some resources just in case. You might have a compass. You might have some food in case you're out there longer than you thought you would be. Or maybe in the worst case scenario, you told someone where you were hiking and when you thought you'd be back just in case something changes and doesn't go to plan. All of these things are just different levels of preparing for that uncertainty. And so instead of feeling like that uncertainty on the MCAT is a sign of things are going poorly, you're just following along that next level of things to rely on. That's what this pattern recognition is. If you don't have that level of certainty of exactly if I'm getting this question right, exactly if I'm getting this question wrong, again, I don't know exactly what mile I'm on on my trail, but there are other things I can look at. I know when information is presented in this way and I think through it in this way, I tend to answer the question correctly. Or I know when information is presented like this and there's a table or a figure or a chart, maybe I get a little freaked out and I start to doubt myself and I get the question wrong. But when I reviewed it, I saw that I actually knew how to answer that question. It was the doubt that was instilled in me by this table. These are things that you will notice and start to pick up on as you go through and practice and do things over time. And you'll start to see what patterns and what things and what behaviors in your own brain lead you to getting questions right to success and lead you to getting questions wrong. So what you're doing is you're trusting the process that you're going through and these steps that you know to follow rather than relying on certainty. Just like going on a hike, you trust that if you follow the trail, it's gonna take you to where you need to go. And remember, when you're practice testing, it's okay to miss questions. It's okay to fail. And I say fail because it's really not a failure at all. It's part of the learning process. And getting questions wrong and seeing those areas that are difficult for you or maybe have new information or a different way of thinking through things will allow you to learn from them and set yourself up for better success in the future. Think of it like any other skill. The first time you try to ride a bike or get on a skateboard or maybe go skiing, if you're anything like me, you probably weren't as good at those things as you are now. And the MCAT is no different. It's okay for it to be difficult or uncomfortable at first because that's why you practice and that's part of how you learn and how you improve. Numerical scores on practice tests can be helpful to give you a sense of where you're at, how you're performing in general, maybe what your strengths and weaknesses are. But don't be afraid of practice test scores that aren't your ideal MCAT score because they're practiced for a reason. My actual MCAT score was better than any of my previous practice test scores. And I took several practice tests, but those practice tests were what allowed me to build the stamina, enhance my content knowledge, and understand the patterns that I would see and rely on on the test that led me to the success that I ultimately had on the MCAT. So even though my practice test scores weren't directly related to my actual MCAT score, yours might not be either, and that's okay. Remember that it's the process of practicing that really is gonna benefit you. And it's easier said than done. You don't wanna put too much weight on those numerical scores. If you found this video helpful, please follow the link below and you can sign up for the free MCAT strategy email list. And on this email list, you can hear stories just like mine from a bunch of different individuals and they're diverse backgrounds and how they overcame obstacles and had success on the MCAT. You can click the other link below and get signed up for tutoring sessions and we can start working together soon. Other than that, thank you for watching and remember, you can do this.